just on your sketch pad, let's take 30 seconds right now and just make a quick little sketch of this wing shape. See if you can get yourself to put in sort of this long sort of wing to figure out, well, okay, I can't really pick out where secondaries and primaries are, but out here at the tip, I'm going to get... feeling for what those wingtips do out there on your, your piece of paper. So just make a, a little sketch of that wingtip shape. Getting really kind of comfortable with sketching out some little wingtip shapes is going to be very, very helpful when we hit the top of the pocket. about to fly away, we don't need to make a portrait of the bird. I just wanted to get us people to sort of play with that shape a little bit. There'll be more opportunities. There's one other little <coughs> awkwardly named wing detail, and this is what's referred to as the bastard wing. And uh, other name for it is the allula. And, um, Here's a bird, it's coming in for a landing, it's about to land, it's got its wings dropped really, really low in what's called a low angle of attack. And you ever put your hand out the window and sort of felt that lift? Right? And then you bring your hand like this and all of a sudden that lift up drops off. You get your hand too steep this way, you lose your lift, because of turbulence back here, and you fall. Right? Um, you can actually see the turbulence starting to happen on the back of this bird's wing. You lose your lift if you get a huge rolling eddy of air behind your wing, and then you fall out of the sky. And that's a problem if you're a bird. Um, so to help with that, when birds are doing sort of slow flight, they look out here on the on those. See, remember those those feathers that are on top of the primaries and secondaries here. Um, so here are my primaries, here are my secondaries. There's a clump of feathers. Did we name those? Coverts. Coverts. Okay, good. So the coverts here on top of the <coughs> secondaries, they actually call those secondary coverts, and you can guess what they call the ones on top of the primaries. <laughs> You're good. Um, there's also this other weird little winglet that has popped up here. What that is, it's like flaps on the front edge of the wing of an airplane that pop up. Those get the air, even at low speeds, to continue in a laminar flow across the surface of the wing. So the same thing that's happening on the airplanes, these birds do, they pop this little allula up in low speed flight. And uh, so if when birds are doing kind of high performance aerobatics, you'll see this little wing deploy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, second one just looks like the second one looks like something that's like been cartoon created or yeah. some different animal. It doesn't look like a bird. And, and the face. Isn't that <laughs> bizarre? And here, these falcons are kind of doing barrel rolls and flipping around and messing with each other. And you look, you can see the little bump, this extra bump on the leading edge of the wing. That's that little allula being deployed. They're actually feathers that are attached to the bird's thumb. So they're the thumb feathers sticking up. It's going. <laughs> That's a little bit of wing anatomy. Um, you usually don't see the, the allula deployed. Sometimes one kind of cool place to see it is when you see hawks doing these display flights. So they will um, they'll take their wings and they'll form them into this little heart shape as they dive when they're doing these display flights. And often in those, they'll take those little allulas, those little bastard wing, and deploy it out to the side like that. They're, they're, they're fun to look for when you're out there. You start looking for them, you're like, oh, you just watch birds that are hovering above an updraft of air, and you'll see the same things. So let's take a look now at, yes? So just one more question before we get that off. Uh, the feathers that stick up, are they all along the wing? Because you said it was the thumb. I mean, does it go across the wing until you get to like the primary sort of joint uh, there? No, you know, so they're, they're, they're just right here. Oh, just there? Just that. Oh, I see. 
These are the covert feathers across the whole wing, and then right attached to the thumb. So the, 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 the allula folds down on top of the primary coverts. I see. And the, then the coverts, do they lift up slightly, or do uh, uh, No, they're, 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 to, they're to have the wind move smoothly over them. Oh, I see. And they can kind of ruffle up when the bird is sort of preening itself, but in, in flight, they're, they're there to be sort of smooth together. So the, together. the flaps are just this little thumb. Yes, box. exactly. Okay. So you're seeing three layers of feathers there. In the tip? Uh, in that wing. Yeah, so the primary feathers, the primary coverts, and the bastard wing. And then down here in the secondaries, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's a whole bunch of little feathers going all the way up over the edge of the wing. So the, the secondary coverts are that sort of middle ridge in there? That's secondary the... coverts would be this whole zone in here. Okay. There are, there's a Even big row like of coverts. Different, different yeah. layers. Yeah, so there's, and there's, so there's, there's starting with a bigger row and then getting into smaller rows. And you'll see that same thing going on with all sorts of different birds. But those are all coverts. Those are all coverts. Thank you. So if, if this bird, you know, uh, sometimes People take you know pot shots at, at raptors and things, and they go to the wildlife rehabilitation center. If this bird you know has to get a operation done on its wing here, that's a covert operation. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Are there coverts on the top and the bottom? Yes. Great question. Okay. So there's there's the covert. Yeah, the coverts. There are under wing coverts and upper wing coverts. Oh, okay. Yes. Just one last question. Are the body feathers also called coverts, or what do you call them? Um, so the covert refers specifically to the, those those oh, ones concrete on the wing. Yeah. Oh. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to establish a way of quickly blocking in a frame that we will use to draw our the details of our bird. If you start by like drawing a little beak and a little eye and kind of work out with all the details there, you're going to get something that in its sort of proportions and its conformation doesn't really feel like the raptor. You're going to see in a moment, there's a lot of stuff as birds are moving their wings around at different angles or shortening and all these sorts of things. There's a lot of stuff to handle. If you start kind of with the details, it's easy to get very rapidly overwhelmed in drawing a bird of prey while it's flying around. Um, but, if you can quickly have a, a, a way of making a thumbnail framework that you can draw your, then your details of, on top of, that is going to really, really help you. So I'm going to walk you through a few observations that I think are really important about getting those initial lines. And then I'll do several walkthroughs of sort of step by step how I would draw this bird or this bird or this bird. All right? So, observation number one, we're going to start with, with three basic ideas. We're going to establish the bird's posture. We will then look at what the bird's proportions are. And then we're going to look for key angles around the edges of the bird that really give it the shape. So posture, proportions, and angles. All right? So by posture, if I'm looking at a bird from underneath, right, I've got the letter T. Um, and in posture, I'm looking at what is the angle of the wings relative to the body? And I make this little uh, T diagram if I'm looking straight up underneath it. Um, if I'm looking at a bird that's, that's flying along from the side, I could, have, I could have something like this. I could have a bird flying along where both of the wings are down. I could have also a bird flying along where the T does not cross at a right angle. So here we've got a right angle. Here I've got a big angle, I mean a small angle, and here's a big angle. Let's take a look at how some of these different angles can pop up in birds. Actually, first, let me, let, here's what, I'm going to go through these, so the rest of these steps. So step one is posture. And we'll, we'll kind of elaborate on posture in a moment. Step two is proportions. I'm going to block in a little diagram that will give me roughly how big, how long, how wide are this bird's wings relative to its body. How long is its tail relative to its body. Those sorts of details are very important if you are uh, trying to draw, say, an eagle versus a falcon. Who has skinny wings? Who has broad wings? The proportions of the wings of a red-tailed hawk are very different than a bald eagle. 
So you're going to look at your real bird and say, what are your proportions? Proportions is step two. Step three is the angles. And in this, I am looking at carving into that framework that I've made the angles, especially around the head and around where the tail meets the body, to kind of get out of this um, and something that looks like you know a, you know pieces of a couple pieces of plywood hammered together. I'm going to carve in the angles, and in doing this looking at what artists call the negative shape. These spaces right in here um, are going to be particularly important. And I'll be elaborating that in just a moment. This is just sort of showing you where we're going. That gives me a framework on top of which I can add my details. But if I start with trying to like draw, you know, how do all these little feathers overlap and start focusing on details, I'm not going to get something that then has the general shape of this raptor when I'm all done. In drawing those angles, the critical idea here, I find, is to focus on what artists call the negative shapes. If I'm looking at this bird, my eyes get so caught up in detail here that it is really difficult for me to... Um, I, I can get lost in that. If, on the other hand, rather than looking at uh, that, I just look at what is the shape of the air that is right next to my tail? What is the shape of the air that is right next to my head? This angle here really pops out to me when I am focused on uh, looking at those negative shapes. The shape of this here, I can see that as a shape. If I'm just focusing on what's the shape of the tail, I might not get the proportions of that tail relative to the body. So this idea of putting, looking when I'm cutting in sort of the angles around this thing to get the shape of the body, looking not at the bird, but at the air next to the bird is extremely helpful. And that's really useful also. You'll be seeing these sort of silhouettes of birds flying around. Um, those, you're not going to be very often seeing all the detail on their bodies, but you will be seeing their stark silhouettes of the dark bird against the light sky. And in those sorts of cases, really looking for those negative shapes is absolute gold. The frameworks that I make to hang the birds, the bird details on, um, it's, a, it's a plastic kind of an adaptable thing. Notice that this one, it's all right angles. But on this one here, the wings and the, um, and the body are not at right angles. If the bird is flying at an angle to you, instead of directly straight on with you, you're going to be seeing your wing lines at a different angle, um, at, at, at an angle other than 90 degrees. It'll be at a, at a slope. So let's match these frames up with birds that might be made from them. So you see how this one, its wings, are not at 90 degrees. Here's a sort of 90 degree bird. This same framework can be used to draw the back of the bird or the belly of the bird. The same framework if you're looking at the bird this way, it's the same framework as you're looking at the bird this way. Um, as a matter of fact, the silhouette of a flying bird when seen below is identical to the silhouette of a flying bird when seen from above. If you're looking at a shadow of something on the floor, you can't tell whether the thing is coming this way or this way. And so that same framework could be made, you know, here's the same shape of a bird. Same shape, same shape. What? Is that crazy? So the, what, what the difference is, let, let me, let me so you're saying that that's not intuitive, let me do a little diagram here. Let's say I had a bird diagram, and let's say I have a bird that's coming here. Here's a bird 
where I'm seeing it from the back, right? Are we good with that? So I'm going to get rid of some of these sort of extra kind of confusing lines. And there's my little bird as seen in the back. If, on the other hand, I got rid of that, Now you're looking at the belly. Mm -hmm. Did that mm -hmm. clarify? It? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so I'm getting I, I just, I just nice. played with how this overlap part was was. Yeah, was kind of with this. Yeah. And we got it on film. Yeah. If you need to rewind. Yeah, five times. Thank Thanks. you for doing that. So here's an example of a bunch of different posture lines that I could use. All right, I've got wings up, I've got wings down, um, I've got 90 degrees, I've got sloping forward, I've got sloping backwards. So when I see a bird, I can make this little diagram very, very quickly. And that carries a lot of information with it. Hold your finger up to, to so, sort of show the, 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 the posture of this bird. Now, take your other hand and hold it up at the angle of those wings. So, kind of initially getting that, that. Those lines, those axes, are going to help you start to frame your bird on the paper. Let's do a few kind of blocking in some birds sort of one step at a time. All right? I'm going to try to draw this bird here. This one is doing something very much at right angles. Um, this wing is coming forward a little bit. This wing here is coming a little bit forward too. Um, let's see how I might approach this. The, the approach that I'm about to show you is not the only way to do it, but this is an approach that you might, uh, how you might consider it. What I'll do is I'll start just with the body axis of the bird. My bird is going this way. Then, on top of that, to give my bird a little bit of chunk, I'm going to have to have something to attach my wings onto, I put in a little a sausage on that stick. Now I'm going to attach my wings onto that, and I do that just with those two little lines, saying I've got a wing that's coming out here and a wing coming down there like that. I'll put them on the front edge of the wing. When I've got the front edge of the wing, I'm then ready to add in a box to create the back edge. From there, I'm going to Divide that wing into two parts, one for my primary feathers, my secondary feathers. I'm going to look at how far down here and how wide is my tail. And I've got a basic framework that I can start to hang my details on. Now comes in looking at the angles. So up here by the head, I'm going to look at this just as a shape. And looking at this versus that, I'm going to go, like, oh, there's a really slopey side and there's a flat side. Right? What is that shape? I'm going to carve that shape. And I'm going to do the same thing back here as the tail comes in. What are the angles that I'm seeing there? Once again, looking at not the shape of the bird's belly and its tail, but what is the shape of the air next to the bird? That's the negative shape. That's a much simpler shape to observe and record than looking at the body of the bird itself. And on top of that, I draw my birdie. 
I know this is like some of these sort of tutorials where like draw a line, draw a line, finish it. Right? But really what I want to, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jumping here is that these initial lines I think are the most kind of critical things for blocking in this bird. Because we're about to take this bird shape and, and make it a, uh, put it in a more complicated position. We started off just like this. I put, put in posture, put a little bit of heft on the body, stuck in wings. But now we're going to try something with both wings up. We have one wing, which we're seeing longer, coming towards us. Notice that this is at a back angle, and a shorter one coming forward. Draw three lines on your piece of paper that suggest this posture. Draw three lines, and see if you can get something that suggests that posture. Did you get something like that? Mm -hmm. Alright. That's what you want to do. So very quickly, I've got a lot of information recorded right there. So I've got my posture. Sometimes I can add a snossage onto that. And stick my wings into it. Now it gets good TV reception. <laughs> From these wings, I'm going to turn these lines here. I'm going to turn those into boards, into planks. I'm going to divide that into a primary and secondary sections. Depending on the angle that the wing is being held, those sections can be different sizes. Sometimes there's a lot more secondary, sometimes you see a lot more primaries. And then I'm going to carve that box up here. The bird doesn't necessarily have a... They, they, often if the bird's wing is bent a little bit at the wrist, rather than it being straight across here, at the bird's wrist, the wing will cant back. So if the wings, bird's wings are sloped back instead of all the way at a full out soar, I'll see that there and I will carve that into my box. And at this point, this is starting to kind of feel like a bird. And it was really, the big part was, was step from here to here. So from the wrist, sloping that back, I then have a framework that I can drop my details into. Let's go for a totally different angle. I'm going to put a bird up here and draw a quick series of lines that you think would capture this shape. What, is, what are some quick lines that you could use to basically kind of no fuss get this? Yes? A big V. Okay. This one's circle. Yeah. She's so going to go for a circle with a big V. All right. Draw, draw, draw how you would kind of frame this personally out on your piece of paper. There's no right way to do it. There's a lot of ways you could do it. I'll show you one. What I did is I started with the big V uh, with a kind of a flat bottom just to give room for the shoulders. For my view, you may have done it slightly differently. You may have started with the mass of that body and then stuck the antenna onto it. And now I'm going to hang the uh, the uh, the body down from that. The wings don't stick into the middle of the body; they're hanging there on the, the the body hangs from the top of those. A little line for the tail. And depending on the bird's angle, that tail may be in the middle of that body here. This one was down at the base. And for putting in its, uh, any other sort of details, I could have stopped right here. But I put in a little cross to kind of give me a sense of where the bird's face is, right through the middle of its face, a line through its eyes, and a line through its beak. Uh, it was very useful for, for putting those in. And on a distant bird, sometimes I'll just put in a cross, and that does a really good job of just with a few little lines kind of suggesting that there's more detail in there. So this gives me a framework then that I can add my details on top of. It. 
So, but I, so I start with those lines, and then I've got a place to, to say, like, like, that's the right angle. If I drew in a wing and drew in another wing and then realized that they were too steep, I would have to do a lot of erasing. But I can put in these lines, kind of get my, 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 my angle working for me, and then I'm good. So one last bird. Here, this one is really foreshortened, coming towards us at a, at a I mean, how would you jump into a, a, a drawing like this? It would be very, very challenging. Yeah? An L. All right, I like that. So if you can look at something and kind of go like, okay, these quick lines, chuk, 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 gives me a feeling for that. You're way ahead of the game. Um, so I put in its body first, put a snossage on it, and then put in my wings, gave myself a little bit of space between where the shoulders come in, so that the wings aren't attaching like this on the back. There's that little bit of space that we saw. And then I turn those into planks. I split those into primaries and secondaries. <coughs> Trimmed that front edge of the wing from the wrist. And then put in a tail. So sort of notice where that, if this bird is holding its, its wings straight and um, has its tail straight, of course it can move its tail any way that bird wants to. Um, notice that the going from the back corner of this wing here to the back corner of this wing here, or to the front corner of this wing to the front corner of this wing, is roughly the same angle that the base of the tail is going. If it's really different on your drawing, that might suggest that something is, either the bird is holding its tail at a really funny angle, or one of its wings in a weird position, or there may be something off with your drawing. Lastly, I put a line through its eyes and put a circle over its beak. The reason I did a circle is that it's easy if you're drawing a raptor to do this. You, uh, you get so into looking at that, 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 that cool beak that you put this ridiculously large head or, or, or beak on your bird. And you get all these birds that kind of end up looking like a toucan. A dodo. A dodo. Um, anything that you're really attracted to and interested in, we have a tendency to make that too large on our picture. So that's why we draw human beings with eyes that are way too big. So it's the proportional bias. Right? And that is that those things that you're interested in, that interest is going to translate into making them too big on your page. So um, Keith Hansen, the Bolinas bird artist, taught me when he's drawing one of these birds, um, if here's its head, he'll just put a little circle in front, looking at how big is that beak relative to the size of the head. And as he's drawing that little circle, he's not worried about drawing a beak. He's just putting it in as a placeholder to get him to pay attention to how big that is. You often find that the beak is smaller than you expected. And then, turn that into a beak, all you have to do is add a little hook on it. And there is a little beak. So that little circle um, helps you, prevent you from kind of going Toucan Sam on your red-tailed hawk. So there's my framework for my bird once again. Let's take a close look at what happens as birds move their wings around. If you're just, if all your birds are in the kind of you know, like plane spotter position here, right? Um, and life is, is easy, but they're going to be doing all sorts of crazy things. So something we're going to have to take into account here is foreshortening. And so I'm going to take a look briefly at foreshortening and perspective and how that applies or doesn't apply to drawing birds. Um, let's start with thinking about perspective. And the idea of perspective is 
there's this change in the apparent size of objects as you go back into space, right? So the, you've seen those pictures of those train tracks receding into the distance. And this has been ingrained in us in every drawing class and every drawing book that we've seen since day one, right? You know, big, close. So if I have, here's my bird's frame. And I'm looking at it, it's circling around out there. If I'm looking at that bird and it tilts its wings up like this, which of these shapes am I likely to see? Two. Two. Wait, wait with your fingers. How many people say two? Wait, so we've got which two, two, way two. was it tilting? Or, um, so it is tilting um, towards you like this. Oh. Is, is, is it unanimous twos? Well, you had, you had two fingers. Oh, I did? So don't, don't copy me, because I can get you in trouble. Check this out. So oh, it's one. It's one. Huh. Let's try a different bird. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Why? Right? Why aren't we seeing the wing that is further away being smaller? Um, and the answer is, by the way, have people seen this book? <laughs> Buy my book? Um, if you are, are kind of thinking like, what will I get everyone that I know for the holidays? <laughs> I can hook you up with signed copies, just let me know. Um, but this book can also help us because it's a rectangle. Now, um, you know as I tilt this thing back, it's going, to, it's going to distort this way, right? Honestly, folks, did it? No. What row? <laughs> right? Is perspective wrong? No. How, when do you see that? You see that if I put this book right here. Right? Close to you. When it's close to you, now you see this edge big, oh, this edge small. Yeah. And the closer it gets, get even closer to it. Right? When she's oh, like wow. this, right? Big here, small here. But then all I have to do is come back this far, right? And they seem the same size. And people in the back are going like, I'm skeptical. So we're going to run back here. All the way back here. It's like, check this out. Now you see small and big. Now check this out. Now you see small and big. So an object that is really big, you're going to see that. And that's what we see it in those buildings, even though you can be a little bit further away from the building. But smaller objects or things that are further away from you, the effect of that sort of railroad tracking um, in this much space is not going to be visible to our eyes. If this was really large, then you would be able to see that. But just in this much space at this distance, you don't see it. The good news is, you can forget about perspective in drawing raptors in flight. All right? So that's, that's taken off the table. Friends at home, you don't need to worry about perspective, but you do need to worry about foreshortening. The idea of foreshortening is if I have an arm that is this length, right, but it is coming towards you, you now see that thing that was this long as being shorter, right? So this arm is foreshortened because it's coming towards you. Or if it's going away from you, you see that as it, uh, if you close, especially if you close one eye, that gets rid of your, uh, your ability to, for, to really see 3D. You see that this is a shorter looking arm than this. How does that apply to drawing birds? It's a big deal. Yes? Oh, well the farther wing is lower. You see more of the length of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I'm not sure how to say it. But you see more of the whole length of it. It's not so much head on, the tip of it. Hmm. Um, that was what I was thinking. Was it's more draped downward versus coming straight at you so that it, it, you see the full length of it instead of it being foreshortened. Is that the, the, it's kind of the, squish. Body, the body's covering up that? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah this, oh. This, this wing does come all the way into here. But we are seeing this is remarkably shorter than this. Oh, huh. but it seemed, what I, I'm sorry, what I was trying to mean was that it, it looks broader in that Yes, it, right. Yeah. Isn't that odd? So it, it looks broader here. and. And a lot, you're saying that that might be because one wing is tilted. Yes, yeah. that's what I was trying to say. Yes, yeah. So, so um, in this case, we are actually seeing 
your eyes are not deceiving you. It's not that things that are further away are going to get bigger, right? This one looks bigger because it is uh, just because of the way that the, the, the foreshortened angle that the bird has its wings. So in this one where it's not doing that, um, whoops, do, 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 here, they're, they're looking basically the same. Um, you know, that's, that one isn't twisting one of those wings. You're absolutely right. So this one is, is, is distorting the size of this one because it is a little bit twist, t tilted in this axis. Yeah. Yep. So, um, but here's my bird. Here's my bird kind of blocked out. Now, um, if the bird's wings are straight like this, when it rocks, I'm going to be seeing something along this line. If, however, this bird doesn't have its wings perfectly flat, but instead has them up at an angle like this, I then, so if, 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 I'm, if I'm flat, as I tilt, you see the same thing going on in both arms, right? But if I have a V up here, as I tilt that, now the angle of the foreshortening is going to be different in my two arms. So for friends at home, here I am, uh, a, a V, right? And now, this arm is foreshortened, that one up there isn't. Right? The same thing is happening with birds as they are flying around. So, check this guy out. Big wing, short wing. A lot of us people, when they would see this, what they will do is they will draw a picture with wings same size on each side, right? Because like, what's going on? Like, why is that? But if it means all that the bird has to do is have one wing slightly at a different angle than the other one, and this is what you get. Here, this bird, it's got the V. Both wings are foreshortened. So both wings look have, as if they've been squished this way. This bird has a wing that's actually this big. But all it has to do is take that and rock it towards you, and you are going to see it get squished. It's not folded. So, oh, um, yeah, this one, yeah, you're right. This one is more folded as end. This one is folded in end and for sure. This idea of the V in the back is what bird watchers or plane spotters call dihedral. A plane or a bird that has its wings up in a V has a dihedral. Yes? I think planes ever have their wings up in a V, do they? Well, they, they do. So, they so, some wings, so um, there, there's, it, it's neat, during um, uh, World War II, there's, it's important to know, be able to identify the type of planes that the enemies had. So they made these little identification charts that had little drawings of, of airplanes from the front. Some of them were like that, some from the front were like this. They had side views, front views, and whether or not there's a dihedral in the wings of that plane is an important thing to look for in your plane spot. So you see it in the airplanes, and um, you see it in some birds. So Northern Harriers have a dihedral. Turkey vultures are famous for it. People talk for about V for vulture. The naturalist Elizabeth Twilliger would always say, Look, V for vulture. Everybody make a V for vulture. Right? And, and so she would make the, the V for vulture. So vultures have a dihedral. Uh, Swainson's hawks have a dihedral. Harriers have it. There's a number of different species. where they, They're regularly flying around with this dihedral on their back. So depending on...